My name is Tammy Schmoon and I'm a registered psychologist and the director of Family Counseling Centres. Today I'm here to talk to you about anxiety and children and why um, your child cannot hear you uh, when they're anxious. One of the biggest complaints that I get from parents um, when I present at conferences or when they're uh, my clients that come to see me, uh, they say that they try to comfort their child, but their child just can't hear them. It doesn't, nothing works. No matter what they say, no matter what amount of reassurance they give them, it's not helpful. And I'm here to tell you that as good a job as you're doing and you are giving comfort and trying to help your child, uh, it's falling on deaf ears. And there's a reason for this. So you need to understand maybe where anxiety comes from in the brain to know why you can't get through to your child. Now, when a child or an adult, anyone is anxious, we need to look at how the brain works. So this comes from Daniel Siegel, who's a, a psychiatrist who talks about um, anxiety and emotions in the brain. So I'm using Daniel Siegel's model. So I want you to imagine that um, my arm is the spinal cord. So um, this is where all the sensory information is collected in, in the body. So what happens when our body senses something's uh, dangerous, and it could be something really small, or it could be you know something that's, that's legitimately dangerous, um, we have a signal that's sent up the spinal cord, and and here this is the base, this is the brain stem. So this is the old part of the brain. Um, almost every creature has a brain stem, and it's in charge of the autonomic nervous system. So it's in charge of heartbeat, heart rate. Um, the blood pumping, our breath, those sorts of things. So it's, it's involuntary. So we have that message that goes up the spinal cord to the brainstem. And then what happens is the system, we feel anxiety in the body first, and then it triggers your limbic system. So this is the emotional center of the brain that most mammals have, um, not so much in reptiles and lower life forms, but it is the part of your body that is in charge of emotions and memory. So what happens is we have this, this sensation of fear in our body, it moves up to our brain stem and then triggers the limbic or emotional part of our brain. Now here, if we put our fingers over top of the limbic system, this is the front of the brain, so it's behind the eyes, it's called the prefrontal cortex. Now the prefrontal cortex is the, the computer part of the brain or the upstairs brain, we call it. It's more advanced in certain mammals, including humans. Um, dolphins, orcas, dogs, um, certain mammals are, have higher, monkeys have a, a larger prefrontal cortex, but in terms of evolution, it's, it's quite young. Now, the cortex does amazing things. It allows us to build skyscrapers and computers and allows us the ability for foresight and hindsight and being able to use critical thinking. However, again, when we sense fear in the body, uh, we have a big emotion, and that has that message is sent up the spinal cord to the brain stem. It then sim, sim signals to the limbic system that something isn't right. So what happens is we go into something called fight, flight, freeze, or collapse response. So the body goes into almost like um, a panic response. And so this emo big emotions and lots of memories come up of every other time that we felt that way, and it happens very quickly. And then what happens is we call, um, we flip our lid. So the prefrontal cortex loses connection to the rest of the brain. So we see if you flip your lid. So that logical computer part of the brain is essentially offline. And we literally can see that in terms of an MRI scan that we lose electrical conductivity. So there's less communication with the logical part of the brain. So when your child is really anxious, and that's anybody. This happens when we're angry, when we're fearful, when we have a really big emotion, we literally lose the ability to think. So when you're trying to discuss your, their anxiety with your child, when they're in this fight, flight, freeze, or collapse response, this emotional, the emotional brain has, has hijacked them. So in order for them to hear you, to really take in your feedback, um, to, for them to take in your comfort, um, you, you can't you can't talk sense into them because the sense making part of the brain isn't available to you. So, and it's also important to understand in terms of the right and left hemisphere. So not only do we have the brain stem, the limbic system, and the prefrontal cortex, the brain is also divided into two sides. We have um, the right hemisphere and the left hemisphere. 
Now, the right hemisphere is what's in charge of um, emotions and creativity and holistic thinking. It's the it's the um, it's the emotional part of the brain. Um, it's the sentimental part of the brain, and it's the part of the brain that is activated when we're anxious. Now, the other side, the left hemisphere, is the logical part of the brain. It's in charge of language. It's in charge of critical thinking, um, looking at the pieces um, and putting together together things. It's the math. It's the science part of the brain. Now, when we try to talk to our children and talk them out of their anxiety by telling them it's nothing to worry about, what's wrong, um, we're speaking to the left hemisphere. We're using language to try to connect. But unfortunately, what your child is not in the language part of the brain. They're in the right hemisphere. They're in the emotional part of the brain. So in order for our child to hear us, we have to do two things. We have to connect with the right hemisphere of the brain, and we also have to disengage the limbic system in order to get that prefrontal cortex back online. So this is where helping the child calm down through breathing or using the physical body, such as exercise, or um, there's other methods that we, we teach our clients in order to deactivate that. Deep breathing is just one of the quick ways to do it, um, belly breathing. Um, or exercise, just really quick. The other thing to do to attach to the to talk to the right hemisphere to engage the brain is to emotionally validate the child. So we can use touch and we use tone and warmth and we we validate saying, "You're really scared right now. This is really hard. You know, you're really overwhelmed right now. I understand you." So it's really connecting with the emotional part of the brain in order for the left to then uh, re-engage because ideally we want the left and the right working together. But you know we have to calm the right hemisphere to bring the left hemisphere back online, just like we need to calm the limbic system to bring the frontal cortex back online. So that's just something for you to understand about your child's brain and why logic does not work when trying to calm a child.